Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Most of you have finished your technics part of your endodontics technic course. The next step is to start seeing patients. When we see patients in the endodontic clinic, we would prefer as a staff you're using a routine setup. From an educational point of view and from a learning point of view, it makes it simpler both for teacher and instructor. First of all, let's look at the chair and the unit. They're placed in a uniform manner uh, as pointed out in the outline that you've been given during your technics course. If we go directly to the bracket table, the only thing we would like to see on a bracket table prior to the entry of the patient into the chair are just those items for placing a rubber dam. Let me point these out. The rubber dam frame, the rubber dam, the rubber dam punch, that rubber dam clamp necessary for that particular tooth, the rubber dam forceps, and of course the napkin chain. After putting the patient into the chair and putting on the rubber dam, then the only item that we would like to see remaining on the bracket table is the rubber dam forceps. Now the reason for this is that occasionally a patient may aspirate some saliva, they may uh, have some medical problem, uh, or you may have some problem in which you'd like to hurriedly be able to remove the rubber dam. So the only item we would like to see remaining on the bracket table, and the only item, is the rubber dam clamp forceps. One item I'd like to point out on the unit. As I said, we had a standard setup. The only item that we don't use in endodontics is the air water syringe. The reason for this has been outlined both in your lecture and also in your technics. But again, let me remind you that if we blow air into a tooth, we may blow in further air contaminants. Also, we could possibly cause an air embolus. Also, water coming from a unit as such may not be sterile. And one of our important points to consider in endodontics is to maintain sterility both in the tooth and amongst all our instruments. Let us go to the back table in your cubicle and review the items from left to right that we have back here. Leftmost side, we have the patient's record and your clinic progress card. Directly in front is the endodontic packet. Now, this is the packet from which you'll be working daily, making entries both on treatment of the patient, you'll be marking your lengths and other information concerning that particular tooth. The next item on the back table is the sterile towel setup. Now let's take a closer look at the instruments inside of the sterile towel. The first instrument is the hemostat. Next is the crown and bridge scissors. Next is the Wesco 25 plugger. This is the Woodson plastic instrument. Let's take a closer look at each end of this instrument. This end we can use as the conventional plastic instrument for placing soft cements such as cavit. The other end of the instrument is a plugger, which can actually be used for plugging uh, zinc phosphate cements or Duralon. Next instrument is the star spoon excavator. If you'll note in a close-up of this instrument, the working end is much longer than the conventional spoon excavator. The purpose for this is to allow us to reach deeply into the root canals to pick out debris. Next is the conventional cowhorn explorer. This is the 
endodontic number 16 explorer. If you'll note in a close-up of the working end of this instrument, it's very long also. The purpose of this instrument is to allow us to locate the orifices to root canals, especially in posterior teeth. Our mirror and our towel forceps. Next in line, you may have a syringe which contains some sodium hypochlorite. The use of this will be discussed with you both in your lectures and your technics course. We have our sterile box containing our root canal instruments. Let's take the lid off of the box and look at the inside, the way the instruments are arranged. In the lower row, we have our instruments, size 10 through 40. Next are two compartments containing absorbent points. The larger point uh, container is containing the barb brooches. The top row contains our long handpiece instruments, our 45 through 90 files, our high-speed burrs, and cotton. Now note, if you will, we have our PCA stops already placed on the root canal files. Now directly behind the endodontic tray is a group of medicaments used throughout endodontic treatment. First is the macrescent. The purpose of the macrescent is to disinfect the occlusal surface of the tooth and the rubber dam prior to making entry into the tooth. Next, the sodium hypochlorite, which we'll use to lubricate, disinfect, and to cleanse the root canal during biomechanical instrumentation. The next two containers contain formal creosol and chlorobutanol. Both of these medicaments are used after completing root canal treatment for the day on the patient. It's an interim medicament. And you'll, from lectures and techniques, learn which one to use at the appropriate time. When we close the tooth, we'll probably be using Cabot, which comes in a small tube. And again, you'll be shown how to place this. We always have a Bunsen burner. Up in the corner of the cubicle, we have our green card. Now this card you've seen on your root canal box. The purpose of this card is to tell us when the last time was that you had this box sterilized. And this is indicated by the date stamped on it. We would prefer that you not have this date exceed a week. Also, that card in the corner tells any endodontic instructor coming into your clinic that endodontic treatment is going on at that time in that cubicle. Last, we have our x-rays from our patient on the view box at all times. Properly wash, dry, and mount these x-rays following each treatment and keep them placed up here so that they're usable at the time we're treating our patient especially if we have some problems concerning obtaining more root length or some other question should arise. Maintaining sterility has been stressed, I hope, both in lecture and in laboratory so far. But as we're approaching our patient care, maintaining sterility is a very important facet of endodontic treatment. We're trying to eliminate bacterial contaminants from the inside of the root canal rather than inject them into the canal. Let me demonstrate how to remove some instruments from the box in a sterile manner. First, we'll go to our sterile towel, take out our forceps, flame them, reach into the box for the instrument that we would like to have, keep the cover on the box at all times except when we're going into it. We can take that particular instrument and either go directly to the patient's tooth or take that instrument and place it under the towel 
as we may be going back to the box for further instruments. The environment under the towel should be the same environment we find inside of the tooth. Actually, after we enter the tooth once, we'll be carrying contaminants, if they exist, back to the towel itself. But we don't wish to carry contaminants from our fingers to the inside of the towel or to the inside of the box, this way or by leaving the box open. Maintaining sterility will help us eliminate bacterial contamination from the root canal system. It'll help us get negative cultures more quickly and allow us to complete our patients more efficiently. We've now completed our routine clinical setup. This is the way in which we would like to see you set up your cubicle during the visitation by endodontic patients. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.